also applied to work in Chiroma Mortuary. Mm -hmm. And that was a wow. very prestigious job to be a mortuary attendant. <laughs> what? Yeah, I was working there. And very few of us, because they used to give slots to medical students, and it, very few would get that slot. And it was paying 20,000 shillings a month those days. That is 1997, eight there. And you work three days a week. So, so all the formalin that gets into your head, maybe that's how my head got messed up. <laughs> Wait, what was your job? It's whatever mortuary attendants do. Receive bodies, clean them up, embalm them. Uh, when it's time to be picked, uh, you prepare the bodies and dispatch. Why were you interested in that? Because of the money. But we are also used to, remember in uh, first and second year we were working in, yeah. with bodies. Right. Yeah, so you get used to seeing bodies, dead, dead people. Oh. But it was interesting because we had... Um, Given given the type of um, earnings of my peers at that time, yeah. out of all the jobs I've done, and I've done very many jobs, it was yeah. the highest paying job. So it was 20,000 yeah. at 97, 98, and you're a student. Yeah. You know, that is, fees alone for one year was 16,000. Yeah. So that is a relative comparison. A month, so what was it pay, that, does it pay that high? Was it paying that high because it's not a everyday common job for people to take Yeah, up. I think so. I mm. think so. I don't know how much they're paid now. Actually, mm. I should go and ask. Yeah. But you also had extras. For example, mm -hmm. you'd have these people who'd say, oh, um, especially from Western uh, laws, mm. like a man cannot cannot be buried when the, he has a beard. So mm. you have to shave. And you know, that is not part of my job description. So you have to pay. So we'd, we'd charge like even 5,000 shillings to shave. Or oh, you get a lady has braids and they can't be buried with braids. You have to undo. Uh, you get a some would be pregnant and they can't bury like as guys in lawyer. You can't bury a pregnant woman with the fetus inside. You you do you open her up and remove the fetus and put it in the coffin. Or you put makeup, lures, loud makeup. So you charge for all those things. <laughs> so I was swimming in money. <laughs> This That's is a, a shock. hard conversation. <laughs> <laughs> the hardest part yeah. I've had in conversation so far. Wow. Yeah, I was swimming in money. I but wasn't ready. <laughs> yeah, but then I was not, since I was not financially literate, I'd spend all of it. We'd spend it with my my guy. I think at that time he, he had come or he was about to go. Mm -hmm. And we'd go watch movies. We'd mm -hmm. go to a Boretta. We'd go. So out of all that three months of working there, mm. I came out with an iron box. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm saying this because so of the... So your money is, is equal to an iron box. <laughs> yes. And it was stolen in third year. Oh, so. my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> so it's still not there. But you see, it's the principle, the, the relationship with money that you are not taught. Yeah. And I think these are some of the things that uh, are important in instilling in our children. <clears throat> How do you save? How do you... Money was seen as... Um, First of all, it was a scarce resource. So mm. anything you wanted, there was no money. Mm. Yeah? Mm. Because uh, priority was given to food and your education. Mm. So now you have all this money and you don't know what to do with mm. it. You don't know how to plan yourself. Because mm. when I reflect, wow. my colleagues who got the same job at that time, mm. most of them were investing in land even, or in businesses. In investments. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And but, at the time, buying land was, was I mean, 60... 20,000 a month yeah, you would could have actually uh, if that's just extra income. And you see that is that is the formal income. Yeah. Remember these things are happening every day. Yeah. 5,000 here, 10,000 mm, here. Mm. So you can end up easily end up with 50 or K or more mm. because of the extra duties wow. that you do. I mean that's 98. So mm. so you actually bowling. Yeah. I was much. bowling. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I've seen my life. <laughs> Yeah, so I think <clears throat> just reflecting, but now going to this other job, the research one, because mm -hmm. it wasn't earning so much, it was not going to my expenses. I, I never saved any mm. the whole time. So I've been working, but mm -hmm. never saved. Started started saving much later. Mm. And I started saving much later after university because of the information and mm. mentorship that someone else gave me, mm -hmm. said, you know, First salary, go join the circle, start mm. saving, just put aside money that mm. you don't mm. 
you you know extra money mm. yeah so mm. i think those principles we need to start mm. teaching our children mm. because we won't always be there to yeah. provide for them or yeah. to mm. and they to guide anyway. them mm. yeah mm. yeah mm. Mm. so that is but that is my campus so um but it's also really good just to hear that your campus was the the, the amount of experiences both in in academia but also in hustle and in extracurricular was so rich yeah yeah you yeah. had quite a rich time mm. you know your years in campus are are uh, very rich yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. i i think i deliberately i deliberately told myself that it i, I can't just be about medicine yeah